expat. We had an expat work group that um, got together uh, based on the big Mac study that was you done. Do big Mac study recommended. Uh, now I do that we look at our expat uh, funding um, for non-public school, non-public agencies, and due process. Uh, the big Mac study indicated that. Uh, there would be an incentive for placements by districts based on the 70 percent district fund and 30 percent that is covered by the X pot, which all districts put money into. Um, the work group got together, discussed philosophy as well as the big med study, and uh, recommended a three-year phasing out of the 70-30 split for non-public school, non-public agency services, which um, the district's uh, IEP teams are recommending. Over three years, we start with 90-10, uh, oh, excuse me, we go from 70-30 to 80-20, to 90-10, to 20-13-14, um, or 100% of those costs would um, <coughs> be with the district and not be supported by the X five. Under due process, uh, recommendation by our committee was to continue with the 70 30 split for due process, but also include alternative dispute resolution, um, formal alternative dispute resolution that happened with the SELPA under that 70-30 split for any settlements. So we're doing pro encouraging more proactive. And um, that this ongoing services from settlements will only be funded for six months instead of in perpetuity as they are now. The impact to this would be to each district a reduction in the X pot per pupil contribution by each district. So that's a that we would stay in the district. The cost for non-public school agency consultant contracts when they uh, transition to 100% impact in each district will depend on the usage of non-public school, non-public agency, and contracted services by that district. So it will vary district to district. Um, the program advisory committee and financial advisory committees um, support this recommendation. Any questions? Any other question? In the three-year analysis, in my district, we would be paying $200,000 more at 100% rate than we would be paying at 100% rate. Um, I, I think I understand that. But uh, I guess I would ask you, what ideas or strategies would you have for me so that, that I wouldn't incur $200,000 plus? Well, some of our discussions were uh, looking at strategies to maintain students within district programs by developing new programs, innovative programs for students uh, prior to placements in non public schools or agencies. It was um, a big thing. Um, the other thing we looked at is that analysis, I don't think, included that as your, your contribution would go up, it would go down, it would go down. And so that payment, it looks like that has, would cost more, but we didn't uh, subtract out. So, you know, how much are you going to save? How much will stay in district? So it could be a wash. So that's not enough to Yeah, it's not enough to Thank you. Correct? Yeah. I think something that, that everyone at the table needs to understand is the XPOC and how the XPOC contribution is and kind of what the district portion is. What happens is the, the total amount of the XPOC budget, so let's say it's $9 million. The $9 million is going to come because then the, what the $9 million basically includes is 100% of the non public school and agency costs. So, as the students are going to the non-public schools, the SELPA is paying all of those invoices, as well as the other the staff associated with non-public schools and schools. So what happens is the, 
the say the nine million dollars that <laughs> is funded by the districts, it's funded either uh, in, by, in two portions by the district. It's it's funded by an extra contribution, um, which is the amount that would cover say the thirty percent when we're on a 70-30 split, it would cover the 30% portion of that 70-30 split. So we have to incorporate the, the amount of the, the $9 million, 30%, kind of, it's not all 70-30, some of it's 100, there's some variables there. But what happens is, is say, the district is going to continue to pay the still the $9 million. You're even going to pay it as uh, X pot X pot contribution for the the thirty percent of due process um, portion to the X pot, and if, if we if we end up going all the way to the hundred percent, let's say we're, we're we move that way, if, if the year, the trend is for the three years. When we get to hundred percent, what will happen is the X pot is going to be funding just. The 30% of um, legal type um, settlements and ongoing services for up to six months, as well as the staff to process all the non public school, all, all of the ongoing staff. There's no change in staff because we still have all of the, all the same invoices, the same students are being placed, or more students are being moved, those types of things. But what will happen is where you have where the X pot used to pay for 30% of that that cost for that student, the district mm -hmm. is going to pay that cost. So as you have 100% of the cost is now being paid by the district, what will happen the X pot contribution? Because the X pot is only going to need to fund a much smaller portion of those non public costs. So the the cost to the district is going to be the, the same depending on how you are placing your non-public school students and your, um, and your non-public you agencies that 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 are coming in. Because those are all, kind of take a look at it as you have all of the students that you're serving in your district, you're paying 100%. All of the services that your, um, your students are receiving in a provider program are being funded 100%. And this is kind of going in the same way. The non-public school expenses for those students are going to be a district cost. The same way, instead of spreading it out. Because what's happened, and if, I think many of you have probably um, reviewed this with your finance people and with your program people, the shift in, in dollars really kind of reflects where the non-public school agency costs are. Because those are the only things that are changing is is where a student is being placed that's going to be the cost of the district. Does that confuse yeah, I, you more yeah, than that? We've had a lot of discussions on district about yeah. this because it, it can be a win or a lose situation. You're in a small district like I'm in, and then you're looking at, right now, I look like that I could make money on, but down the line, I could have a, a couple of non public school kids and cost me so much money. I'm going to be really upset now where I could be in a better position being part of the X project as it is now. And that, that's a concern for a small school district like me. Yeah, one bad year. And one of the, and one of the things that um, the X cut was originally intended for was for unexpected costs. That's why we're having a, a six month for any new placement. Because other due process, not due process, unexpected. Because those, yes, those are, un, those are totally unexpected. So, when we're looking at this, we know that those students are there. It's, it's something that you can budget for. Yes, under a type. But what I'm saying is, is you're still paying the whole bill. Self-wise, you're still paying the whole bill. So it's a matter of, are you going to pay for your own kids 100% or is it going to go back and forth and districts are paying for others and others are not? Mm -hmm. And that's what's happening. We're kind of supplementing our non And so based on the FICMAC re recommendation, they requested that we take a look at this. And mm -hmm. Could you review again the FICMAC uh, recommendation? Basically, um, Because you said something that phrase taking advantage of, yeah. so I, I'm going to okay. that up more. 